Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Um, Megan here, the faithful fibromyalgia warrior. And I'm out um, on a sort of a path, a walking path, if you will, with Birdie. Yep, me and Birdie on the road again. Uh, this leads towards the those fields that I've uh, you guys have seen in some of my videos, not too far from our house. And because he's so good, I actually... He's, he's pretty good at coming back when he's called. I don't have to put him on a leash, which is amazing, because if I had to, I couldn't do it. He would be pulling me too much. So, uh, welcome back to the channel. It is 10 o'clock here in Colchester, England. It's a little bit cloudy, but it's a beautiful day. It's nice and warm. Perfect to be out and about, me and my dog. So, um... Thank you so much guys for coming back to my channel. Now, if I haven't made it obvious before, I'll, I'll do it now. Just to lay it out there, I am not a doctor, a nurse, any sort of medical professional in any way. I have no, um, you know, certified training or anything like that. Everything I know, I've learned by researching myself but please, please, please do not take anything I share, anything I suggest as medical advice, okay? Because honestly, it's not. It's just, these are things uh, that have worked with in my life uh, that have helped me reduce pain and inflammation. And um, one of the most annoying symptoms of fibromyalgia, which was an amazingly awful brain fog, okay? So when I talk about being all in carnivore or, you know, how the ketogenic protocol is fantastic and it could help you, it's just a suggestion. And if you don't look, if you're, what you're doing, if you're, if you're, if your blood work's good, if your blood pressure's great, you know, if you're young and healthy and fit and, you know, in pretty good shape, then do what you're doing. Don't, don't break it, don't, don't fix it if it's not broken, you know? But for me, my body was broken. Um, it was in disrepair, it was in disarray in some extent, and it was not where it should be for optimal health. Now, I say that I'm all in carnivore because the truth is, when I started keto two years ago, just over two years ago. I was still trying to include um, dairy. Uh, I was still trying to include loads of caffeine. And I was um, including, you know, uh, a little bit of carbs. I was still including, you know, garden salads. You know, maybe it was just iceberg lettuce. Maybe it was just lettuce with a bit of cucumber. Um, or, you know, now I, I made the mistake of trying to eat dark leafy greens, thinking that maybe I'll be able to handle kale and spinach if I cook it. And the fact of the matter is, and this is even before, um, my, what I've recently learned about all the toxins and oxalates that are in dark leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables. Um, I knew that they were horrible for my IBS. But I tried to eat them because they were highly recommended as options. And I'm all about having options. However, I've had to come to accept the fact that I am different. Uh, everybody is different. And what worked for a lot of people is not going to work for me. Perfect example. My brother's sister. My brother's sister. What am I saying? Sorry, my husband's sister recommended to me um, a book that is paleo uh, way of eating at, because it helped her with her Hashimoto's and it was just soon after I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism or underactive thyroid. So that's why I started with paleo. Um, and she can tolerate vegetables and salads and she can tolerate, um, you know, nuts and seeds. I can't. I can't. Never have been able to, probably never will. Um, they're not, they're, they're 
impossible. They're very hard to digest. They're very high in fat. And as I've recently learned, my favorite nuts, almonds, are also super duper high in oxalates and toxins. And so while I thought I was doing the right thing for a while, it was making things way, way, way worse. Oh, here we are in the, skir in the scorched fields again. Oh, yeah, and there's my insane dog waiting for me, laying in what's left of the grass and the weeds with his ball that he will probably not let me have. But there we go. So it worked for her, you know. She, she followed it. She did all the smoothies and the dark green leafy stuff and avocado and worked her way up to eggs with a little bit of bacon now and then. Um, and she enjoys nuts and seeds and she does fine with them. You know, my brother's wife, my other sister-in-law, um, has psoriatic, psori psori psoriatic um, arthritis. Basically, it's kind of like having psoriasis and arthritis forms underneath, from what I can understand, if I'm going to simplify it, right? And they went through... Um, uh, they went to a, they went to a, a functional medicine doctor, which they do exist out in BC. Uh, they're in, they're on the West coast of Canada. Those don't exist here in the UK. Um, and they've tried, uh, keto, uh, they tried the ketogenic diet for a while. He did it with her uh, to support her. Um, I think they had some success, but um, we're finding, she was finding, I guess, that she wanted to add more things in. So uh, they went to something that was more paleo, which I think is kind of where they are. You know, they love their meat, but they also will enjoy um, like granola that's just all roasted, different mixes of roasted nuts and seeds, but without any gluten in it. So you know, so they include, they do have nuts, um, et cetera. So, and that works for them. And that's, that's, they, they do great with that. They do great with, you know, she does okay with, um, small amounts of fruit. Um, I think she even does okay with, um, not with dairy, but she can do like alternative milk beverages and, and, and desserts. And she's okay with that. I can't do, I don't do well with any of it at all, you know? And so for me, I really had to take this to the ultimate elimination diet. Um, so I started out trying paleo for two weeks, just, you know, the dark leafy greens and the smoothies and the juices and uh, worse than I ever did for me, for me, because mainly because of the IBS found keto and uh, that helped me lose a lot of weight, a lot, but then I realized that um, I was still feeling gross. I was, I started to up my, my, the fat of my meat. So, you know, I went from 10% fat. Now, now I eat 23 to 25% fat beef and I feel amazing. You know, like right now I'm just, I'm not even having bacon at the moment. I don't even crave it at the moment. Right now I just, I'm happy and I'm satisfied with um, fatty ground beef lightly salted for taste and a couple of egg yolks and I mix it all together in the pan fry it all up and eat it in including the rendered fat by the way and it's delicious and it keeps me going for a while so I'm happy with that um, I can eat uh, lamb chops or other cuts of lamb so I think for me what I'm realizing is that um, what seems to work best for me is ruminant animals so animals that have multiple stomachs right because when they eat the grasses and the grains and and um, any cereals they are actually able to break down and process all of those things through their multiple stomachs digested in a way that lets their their meat muscle be tasty and even fatty but it doesn't cause me any kind of reaction. I've noticed uh, even just having, um, like I said the other, in my, I think it was my last video, I got this mix of um, pork mints and beef mints, or ground, for those of you not in the UK. That's all it is, is ground beef, right? And it was a 60-40 split with 60% beef, 40% pork, but it was too much pork. 
And I think it's maybe because of what the, the pigs are being fed and the fact that they don't have multiple stomachs. So whatever they absorb, they absorb and it's what, what they're eating and absorbing that's getting in the meat that's affecting me. <sighs> but that's me. There are loads of people who can have lots of pork and lots of poultry and it doesn't affect them. But for some reason, it's bothering me right now. So, okay, I'm cutting it out for a bit. I'm hoping I might be able to reintroduce it at some point, but we'll see, right? This is what I found worked for me. Now, I watched this great video um, that was put together by a YouTuber by the name of uh, Steak and Butter Gal, uh, Bella Ma, and, and you'll find her on YouTube. She's, she's really, seems really cool. And she was uh, interviewing somebody who was talking about oxalates and plants and what they are, what does that mean, why, why is it so bad for us as humans, which ones have the highest content. Um, and I found out for myself that almonds are one of the worst things to eat. Even the ones, even if they're roasted. Like, sorry guys, if you love almonds, it, yeah, it's true. Now, some people will eat them and it may never affect them. But if you're some, so, someone who is super sensitive like I am, avoid them. Whether that's almond milk, almond flour, whether that's the almond itself, you know what I mean? Like, there's a reason why I, I was finding, I couldn't figure out why um, if, if I gave up gluten, why was almond flour an issue? Why was potato flour an issue? And of course, that's the whole carb part there too, and I just couldn't do it. But for me, that's why. Um, and some people, it doesn't affect them. I am not one of those people, right? Now, I fully accept that eating a meat-based diet or even full-on carnivore may not necessarily suit everybody. It may not. There are parts of the world where it is difficult to get meat because it's too expensive. And I'm not even talking about the cost of meat um, here in the UK and Canada or the United States. I'm talking about third world countries like in India, where a lot of people still eat mainly plant-based because that's what they can afford that's what they have access to. And even then, some of them have a hard time getting it. And it's just that they've adapted to it. Not that their bodies wouldn't love, you know, some chicken or some pork if they ate it. But meat itself, red meat, hard to come by. And of course, for, for those who are, uh, I don't know if it's just Hindu or if it's also Sikh, but the cow is considered sacred, too sacred for eating. So they don't eat beef. Now, for me, um, I consider all animals to be sacred because God gave them to us. But um, he, I believe, based on what I've read for myself in in Genesis chapter not in Genesis chapter nine, I think it's around verse two or three, God gave us these animals to be our food, a source of food. Okay, so there are some people who can absolutely eat some red meat have a little bit of veg, a little bit of fruit, um, low carb or not. And, you know, if they're getting at least some degree of exercise or overall otherwise looking after themselves, probably be okay. And so they may not have to go full carnivore. But for me, all of that stuff is like, to, in my body, it's like poison. Okay, because I can't, I cannot do it. It makes me feel sick. It makes me feel nauseous. Um, it, it gives me headaches. It gives me muscle cramping and joint inflammation. And so I stay away from it. And that's me. You know, that's the thing. Like, so when I say, yeah, yeah, I, I, my, 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 my beef is usually 23 to 25% fat with a bit of salt and a couple of egg yolks mixed in. But that's, that's after, I've gotten to that point gradually after almost two years of just seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. Knowing that, no, I cannot handle avocados. Uh, knowing that, yeah, I can't do egg whites. Knowing that when meat's too lean, it makes me feel hungry. So upping the fat gradually. Please, please hear me when I say this. 
by no means do I think you need to go out and suddenly buy yourself a giant pack of 25% beef, if you can even get it, and start with that. Please don't. Start with whatever meat you enjoy, which is maybe burger patties, right? Because it's a bit leaner beef and it'll be easier to go from there to decide what you enjoy, what works for you long term. And if you do good with the leaner stuff, fantastic. And if you don't, that's okay. If you are not keen on um, like beef as far as from a cow, try lamb. Maybe you'll do all right with pork or poultry or seafood and fish. Whatever works for you, you know, that's high in protein, comes with its own fat, and it's low or has no carbs, if you are planning to eat this way, is going to be the way to go. You know, if you're going to stay mostly meat-based, but on the keto side, more on the keto side, well, then that means limit your total carbs a day to 20 grams or less. And, you know, you can feel free to have those carbs come from dairy, if you tolerate it, or, um, you know, non-starchy vegetables, or, you know, berries. You know, some people can handle some berries. I wouldn't advise nuts because they can very easily become addictive and they're super high in fat. And again, they're also high in toxins and oxalates, which are not great for the body overall. So, um, that's just what I, you know, coming from, coming from me. But you know, there are some people who can do a little bit of raw honey, um, tiny bit of fruit, and then eat mostly meat. And they do great with that. There is um, a periodontist out there who is dealing with terminal cancer. His name is Dr. Al Dannenberg. And that's basically what he eats. And you know what? Four years ago, he was given three months to live. Now, he's had no new cancer cells develop. He still has some. And he's not considered to be technically in remission, but he's also not getting any worse. So that way of eating has worked obviously brilliantly for him. So there is absolutely a wide range. For me personally, I've had to cut out sweeteners, all sugars, all fruit, all vegetables. I've had to cut out all plants of any kind. Everything processed, all the seed oils, all the fake foods, because it made me sick. You know, I have also, um, but something else I've also been doing a lot of, especially over the past year, is getting outside at least once every day. Even if it's for five minutes standing in my bare feet in my backyard, even in the winter, because honestly the winters aren't that super cold over here. Um, if you get a, if you get loads of snow and ice, obviously I don't recommend that, but you know, I take cool to cold showers every once in a while just to um, help uh, revitalize, you know, wake up my muscles. It helps with some of my pain. Um, I also make sure that I look up at the sky every morning with my glasses off, with my eyelids closed, just getting in the, those invisible red lights from the sun that tell my body, oh, it's, it's time to wake up. It's morning. And that's what I do as well. So there is a lot that goes on. It's not just about the food. Food is important, whether what you eat or don't eat, but there's other stuff that matters too. You know, I, I took some liver supplements for about two months because I knew somebody I trusted. There was someone I trusted online who was taking it, um, carnivore yogi, and she's fantastic and it works for her. And I thought, you know what? She's having a healthy pregnancy. Her 14 year old daughter's taking different supplements um, and it's, you know, helping her with some of her autism symptoms. And so why not? You know, I trust her. I don't think she's, you know, it, give it a whirl, see what happens. And, and for me, I can't do it, but that's just me, you know? So for me, as soon as I stopped taking them a day later, I felt fantastic. And that's just me. And that just goes to prove that what works for one person won't work for up, won't work for everybody. And so when I say um, these things could help you, 
please, please, please take it as just advice because it's what's helped me. It may not help you, but then again, it could. You know, I did find, yes, a dramatic improvement when keto helped me lose weight. I lost, I've lost over 65 pounds and kept it off, probably now closer to 70 pounds. And I feel fantastic that way, which has taken the pressure off my joints, taken the pressure off my SI joint in my back, as well as in my knees and in my wrists. It has eased the inflammation that I con that would constantly feel all the time, every day, no matter what, through my fingers, through my toes. And it is it has reduced it. Is it fully gone? No. Will it be fully gone? I have no idea. But it's enough of an improvement that my quality of life has gotten better. Um, as I say, yes, it felt great to lose all that excess weight, all that inflammation, all that bloating. Absolutely. But one of the greatest side effects that I first felt was the lessening of my brain fog. And that was amazing. So for me, where I am now, you know, is it's, it sort of all has worked together. You know, I've talked about, and I, I absolutely believe it in my other videos that God led me to find the ketogenic diet and the carnivore protocol for a reason. Yes, to improve my health. Because until I started to lose the weight and the inflammation and, lo and, and, and drop weight and feel more confident, that's all I could think about. Once that started to change and shift and the brain fog lifted, I was able to remember the joy I got from my relationship with God. Now, the other thing is, and I've shared this and I have no shame in it, I have bulimia. Sorry, I have, I'm in recovery from bulimia, for bulimia, for um, food addiction, specifically carbs and sugar. And I am also um, someone who has depression and anxiety. So living with depression and anxiety, let me just say, um, finding a way to overcome and manage those things because it's not like they just disappear. It's not like they don't exist. If I was to start eating crap, right? Um, I would put on weight, I would feel horrible, and my depression would come back. And when there are challenges in life or when things go on that I can't control and I get anxious, if I was to eat crap, the same thing would happen. So I do take SSRIs um, and that has definitely made a huge difference for me personally. I take sertraline and that has made a huge difference for me. Um, it has really uh, made my depression very, very low and manageable. And once I started eating better um, and I started to lose the weight and I started to feel more confident and I started to turn towards, you know, praying and meditating that was the final that was the final piece of the puzzle for me you know and for me i think what has made a huge difference just to minimize the anxiety i deal with because the thing is is uh even when the medication helped me with my depression i was still overwhelmed with anxiety most of the time um now at this point um i was definitely full on dealing with all of my different medical issues, but I wasn't able to pray or really meditate because I just, I didn't have the ability. I was just, the brain fog was too bad. And that just was like a vicious cycle. But for me, especially, um, it's a whole bunch of different things. Absolutely no plants of any kind in any form. No dairy, no sweeteners, nothing processed, no, you know, um, and just fatty beef. That is my sweet spot. That is my happy place with a little bit of salt uh, for tasting and a couple of egg yolks. And that has been what has been the best thing for me. No sauces, no seasonings other than salt. And that's it. And that has kept me clear-minded and focused 
And when I do start to feel anxious, um, I'm able to meditate or pray, whether it's feeling anxious over, oh, I feel like I'm being tempted by my old food addictions, my old, you know, stressors and, and things that used to worry me are worrying me once again. Well, when I do that, it makes a difference. So I think it's important. I think it's about, yes, what we eat and don't eat. Um, I think it's also about clear mindedness. I think it's about when we're tempted to fall into old patterns or eat the things we know are not going to help us. It isn't just enough to say I won't do it. It might mean we need to pray through it. We need to meditate on, on other things and all the positives in life that we do have. Um, at least that has made a huge difference for me. I hope this is helpful. I really, really do. Um, and honestly, if you have a medical condition, for example, like hypoglycemia or you are type 1 diabetic, please, please, please speak to a medical professional before you make any dramatic, drastic changes because um, in this case, you actually will need to have some carbs in your life, okay? Um, and, and for me to say, yeah, cut out all your carbs, meanwhile, you're type 1 diabetic and you need that because you don't make enough insulin, that could be a very dangerous thing. So please, if, especially if you have conditions like that, talk to someone who is a medical professional. In the meantime, if there's anybody you think this might help, please share it. Um, that's why I do these. I, I have fun. I like, you know, sharing videos of me and Birdie out, out in the fields and going out uh, along the trail near our house, but also sharing things that have helped me if they might help you guys. So please go ahead and pass this on to anybody that um, you think might benefit. Thanks so much for all your support. If you like this video, please, please give it a like. Um, please subscribe if you haven't yet. And let's just build community, get together, let's support each other and help each other. Because honestly, at the end of the day, that's what we should be doing, right? Thanks, guys. Love you loads. Have a great day. Talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.